So, <clears throat> happy birthday, Fumihiko Maki, an important uh, Japanese architect whose birthday is today, uh, laureate uh, of the Pritzker Prize. I forgot exactly in what year, but maybe it says in the short biographical note that I will read now. So, Fumihiko Maki, born September 6, 1928. Uh, so he's 93 years old, just like uh, Paul Kemetov or Shemetov, um, the third architect about I will talk about whom I will talk today. Both 93 years old. He's a Japanese architect who teaches at Keio, Uni uh, Keio University. In 1993, he received the Pritzker Prize for his work, which often explores pioneering uses of new materials and fuses the cultures of East and West. Here is the man, quite a nice age. I mean, really, architects refuse to die. Bravo to them. There are some very important architects who are all over 90 now. Uh, Alvaro Siza, Toshi, Frampton, uh, Maki, uh, anyway. Frank Gehry. Uh, so, but, but Fumihiko Maki, as opposed to other Japanese architects and other you know, star architects, is more modest and more reticent. And I, I like this about him. It's also true his work is not so you know, spectacular or flamboyant, but he built uh, sig significantly, and we are going to see some of his works. Um, so yes, he, he, he was indeed connected with what we might call um, the meeting between East and West. This sometimes does happen in Japan and it happened since uh, Japan opened up to the world from, from the mid uh, uh, 19th century. And uh, there, there is some kind of, uh, although it is very rooted in its own culture, Japan is able to absorb and transform influences coming from uh, other parts of, of the world, maybe primarily Europe and the United States. Now, Steinberg Hall at Washington University, 1916, St. Louis. Uh, interesting that you know he, he built at the beginning of his career in the United States. Perhaps, and I do not know, he studied in the United States like, like other architects from other parts of the world. It's not bad, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's not a building that, uh, you know, screams at you, look at me, but uh, I think it has uh, some nobility, some dignity. I, I don't know about this part, if this was made by him, somehow seems to be a little bit uh, out of place, but maybe I'm wrong, just like in, uh, in, the, in the palace, uh, uh, Kerikati in Vicenza by uh, Palladio, where uh, an old, uh, newer intervention happened on the second floor here. Well, I could be wrong. Maybe that's how the, he designed it. Uh, it. It does seem to be a little bit out of uh, what the whole building says. Interesting roofing. Uh, so, uh, an early work by uh, Fumihiko Maki in St. Louis. Now, Hillside Terrace, 1969 in Tokyo. This is an important uh, housing complex in Tokyo, uh, 1969. Again, with a typical uh, Fumihiko Maki reticence, uh, but uh, reticence which does not fall into, uh, you know, excessive... Uh, uh, indifference uh, or, um, I mean, not, no, sorry, in excessive uh, uh, timidity or uh, even indifference. No, it is a complex of buildings which has interesting visual uh, elements, but uh, it's, not, uh, it's, not, uh, it's not at all flamboyant. And this is Fumihiko Maki. Uh, even in his later works, we are going to see some works, even some tall buildings, you know, and in New York City. He is uh, rather for quality and for uh, elegance.
Hillside Terrace in Tokyo, 1969. Now, he worked together with uh, Kento, Kento Tange uh, for the Expo 70 in Osaka, a very famous uh, international uh, exhibition, uh, very futuristically oriented. So traveling back in time um, uh, to the streets of Osaka, Japan in 1970, people today can only imagine the visions many architects around the globe had for future designs and innovative building technologies that would later ignite today's generation of architects. The theme of the expo was progress and harmony for mankind. And the aim was to showcase the possibilities of modern technology to create a foundation for a high quality of life and peace throughout the world. Images from the event after the break. <laughs> well, this text was not written by me nor by uh, um, Komaki. A total of 77 countries attended the event and the number of visitors surpassed 64 million people, making it one of the largest and best attended expositions in history. This was the first World's Fair to be held in Japan. Today I thought of a possible uh, uh, theme for uh, a new World's Fair if we are to continue having World's Fair kind of in opposition with, uh, with this one from 1970, which was called Progress and Harmony for Mankind. I would propose as a theme for a possible future such World's Fair, uh, the, the, the subject Taming Met, Man, Taming Man, yes. Not Taming Nature, but Taming Man. Okay, so here are, uh, pictures from the Osaka 1970 and indeed it was uh, an explosion of uh, uh, you know uh, promotional uh, visions for a future bright future in which technology was uh, to place uh, uh, to, to play an important role this is Kionori Kikutake an important metabolist um, uh, architect uh, anyway, the whole exhibition was uh, was splendidly, uh, uh, you know, futuristic. Maybe a little bit less this anyway. Uh, but all in all, it was uh, it, it was at that time showing the the Japanese proudness in in the field of technology, and uh, and uh, as you can see, these images show it. What exactly Fumihiko Maki did, I, I think he worked in the, you know, for the larger scheme together with Kenzo Tange. Maybe he didn't design a particular building. Because his work is not, although there are some works by Fumihiko Maki that show, uh, uh, you know, uh, significant, uh, uh, you know, uh, courage, technologically speaking not as much as some other uh, architects. He was not, as far as I know, a, a, a metabolist like here. I think this is by Kisho Kurokawa. Anyway, the spiral, 1985, another important building by Fumihiko Maki in Tokyo. And uh, he almost escaped the, the, you know, the, the illness of what I call uh, postmodernism. Uh, for me, postmodernism was more of an illness than uh, deconstructivism. Uh, deconstructivism, I don't consider an illness, although Patrick Schumacher considered it a so-called transitional period between modernism and parametricism. Uh, anyway, uh, so this is the building by uh, Fumihiko Maki, and it has, uh, you know, it is a hybrid building, and uh, Fumihiko Maki is good at this. Especially inside, you can see that there are interesting uh, uh, things happening. It's very Japanese, but at the same time, there is some kind of a European sensitivity at place uh, here. So it was designed in 1985 and uh, is one of the best known works by Maki. Spiral is a place where people can drop by whenever they want to experience genuine art to look at exhibits over a cup of tea or enjoy a live concert while having drinks. Therefore, the spiral building is designed to meet varied needs 
flexibility concept as part of the concept concept of fusion of art and life spiral building combine the use of commercial functions fashion shop stores restaurant cafe beauty salon with cultural and artistic activities carried out in a multi-purpose room fashion shows art and contemporary design exhibitions theater dance concerts etc by the way of this i thought of because tadao ando's birthday will will, will approach uh, us uh, in a few days and uh, I, I i prepared already uh, 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 an invitation uh, you, you know uh, like i do for all the all these presentations so I, at first I, I felt tempted to show him and Armani together. Although, you know, it's not Armani's birthday, it's uh, Tadao Ando's birthday, 80th birthday. But somehow I feel that um, they are friends. And I imagine uh, Armani admires uh, Alvar Alto and maybe the admiration is reciprocal, mutual. But then I renounced, I, I, I did another, another poster, but there is an element of a, flirt, a slight flirtation between Tadao Ando and, uh, and Fashion. And by the way of Fashion, I cannot forget what Oscar Wilde said, that Fashion is so ugly that we have to change it every six months. Well, we are fascinated by Fashion. And there is a book by Mark Taylor, a very interesting book about um, saying in essence that uh, Fashion replaced religion. Interesting. Okay, so views from the uh, from the spiral uh, from inside the building, the spiral. Um, so art and fashion, art and commerce. Although art is supposed to be opposite to commerce, but uh, this is an interesting attempt to bring them together. Uh, gymnasium, 1984, uh, very Japanese building with some uh, drama, sculptural drama, if I can call it so. Now he was and is a good architect uh, for Mihiko Maki and uh, he is not the, the prisoner of a so-called style. I guess he designed both buildings, or it's just one building with two, 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 two parts. Uh, in Chiba, 1989, formerly known as the Nippon uh, Convention Center, derived from the German word meaning trade fair, is the second largest convention center in Japan behind the only Tokyo big site. Makuhari Mesa was designed by famous Japanese architect Fumihiko Maki and was completed in 1989 with the intention of establishing this area in Japan as an architectural destination separate from Tokyo proper. Uh, okay, so it's quite a large building indeed. The roofing again plays an important role, uh, brings drama to the to the building. I like this part of the building, the entrance, which is indeed uh, architecturally enticing. And the fact that it is red, uh, painted in red, I think it helps. 
uh, this interior is, you know, a large space, that's it. Anyway, another gymnasium, 1991, the Tokyo Metropolitan uh, Gymnasium. He had some very large uh, commissions. These these Japanese they can build anything and they build it they build anything to perfection they're unbelievable I don't know how they do it uh, maybe they are extraterrestrials Yerba Buena Center in uh, for the arts uh, in San Francisco well you know a North American building built by a Japanese man I like more the previous buildings done by him in Japan. But then uh, look at these buildings in San Francisco. And San Francisco is a nice city, but uh, still, you know, the, the Japanese architecture is, has a variety uh, and a sculpturalness that uh, most North American buildings don't have, although they have their own exceptions. Here you see on the right, uh, the museum built by Mario Botta. Uh, there is one uh, very close also built by uh, Snoheta. But uh, this is by uh, Fumihiko Maki. Republic Polytechnic in Singapore, 2006. It's this complex of buildings. Uh, it's a university uh, campus. Uh, and uh, it has qualities, you know, it's the buildings themselves maybe are not, you know, very spectacular, but the connections between them, the interstitial space, I think is interesting and, 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 and well handled. And this was an initial sketch for this Singapore uh, work by uh, uh, Fumihi Komaki. It's a cluster of buildings. The, the buildings seem to be identical. Now, this is a religious building in Ottawa, in Canada. Uh, I don't know exactly why it is called delegation of the Ishmaili Imamat. Um, again, I think his works in Japan are, are more interesting, but uh, he built also in Canada, in the United States, and so on. Maybe this was his interpretation of what it meant to build there. But I like this uh, embroidery here, so to speak. So this is in Canada, a religious building, uh, believe it or not. Uh, and uh, now we move to Pennsylvania, uh, University of Pennsylvania, the Public Policy Center, Annenberg, a very different building from the previous one. Somehow I think of uh, La Bibliothèque Nationale de France by Dominique Perrault when I see this, because there also Dominique Perrault employed uh, wooden shutters behind uh, or oblongs behind the glass facade to protect the otherwise uh, tortured books by the sunlight. It's a decent building, what else can we say? But it has an elegance, which probably this one here doesn't. MIT, Media Lab Extension at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, which proudly situated itself in 2009 19 uh, on the same place uh, on the list with the uh, most competitive universities in the world with um, the University Georgi Asaki uh, from uh, Yash. I'm uh, smiling, but I'm happy that uh, Yash uh, 
share the same position with MIT in 2019. Uh, and the dean uh, was uh, a few times here on Zoom. I, I discovered only after after the presentations, uh, Mikhail Drishku, who teaches, I think, in Yash, uh, the theory of architecture. Anyway, moving forward. Um, so this is at MIT in the United States. His architecture is not very, very so-called special, you know, but it's done well and it has a certain degree of elegance and a certain sensi sensibility. Astor Place in 2013, uh, you know, a building that uh, brings a fresh uh, modernity to Astor Place. Uh, here it is, but uh, he uses a lot of glass, but he divides the glass you see in vertical panels. So, um, you know, the, 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 the image is not, uh, uh, is not uh, you know, uh, alarmingly uh, advocating the same sameness that most uh, office buildings do. So Fumihi Komaki in Manhattan, in New York City, uh, 2013. He built us a skyscraper at the World Trade Center. Uh, I don't know who's the man on the left. Anyway, Fumi Hikomaki is on the right. Now, this one, uh, the new World Trade Center, uh, uh, the Tower 4, was built by him. And here it is. Um, very elegant. I mean, you know, you could say, what's so special? I think it's elegance. It's, it's special. Otherwise, yeah, it's a glass tower, it's an office building, but it has, it has a certain something, I don't know how to call it, you know, what in French would, would be called quelque chose. There is something, a quelque chose here that identifies Fumi Hikomaki from other uh, architects. Even here, you know, the, uh, the, you know, the first, uh, you know, the bottom of the building, it's done with a, I almost used a rather vulgar word with gusto. It's done well. And even here, you know, again, it's a glass office tower, but he has a slight interventions that bring uniqueness to otherwise a building that would not have been, you know, particularly so-called unique. So here it is in a famous location and tall enough to, 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 to stand out. Fumihi Komaki at the World Trade Center in Manhattan. Now the Aga Khan Museum in Toronto. Aga Khan offers uh, beautiful prizes in architecture to architectural works uh, built in the Islamic world. Uh, it's a very serious uh, program and I admire uh, always uh, the, the prizes they offer. They offer prizes to very good uh, works. 2014 in Tokyo, in, uh, in uh, Toronto. Um, so this is the museum of the, of the, the, the Aga Khan Museum. Why it is in Toronto, I don't know, but anyway. So he's older than Tadao Ando. Tadao Ando will be 80 years old uh, in a few days. Fumihiko Maki is today 93 years old. Uh, it's a fine building. Aga Khan promotes modernity, but not an aggressive modernity, and, and thus not a superficial modernity. Is an excellent uh, uh, price. Now this one, uh, I don't know what it is. In 2015 in Singapore, uh, it's a tall building in Singapore. Singapore, which uh, is called by some the, the, the Switzerland of Southeast Asia. Uh, they have a lot of money. The standard of life is very high there. 
Uh, so, an apartment building uh, uh, by uh, Fumihiko Maki. Our friends from our previous uh, Zoom meetings, uh, Dalian and Florian from uh, Indonesia, now they are in Singapore. Florian is teaching at the University of Architecture uh, there in, in Singapore. Anyway, maybe one day I'll ask them to make a presentation about Singapore. There are important architects who build the uh, work commission, you know, star architects. Sea World Culture and Art Center. Uh, from 2017, so was invited by China. Merchants Property Development, one of the, one of the most revered Chinese real estate companies to undertake, well, their first project in China. This, I guess, was written, is from the website by uh, the, the website of uh, Fumihi Komaki. Our mission was to design the first cultural facility within the sea world's multi-use development that serves as a dignified house of art and culture for Shenzhen and greater China. Uh, interesting that this was initiated by the China Merchants Property Development. So that is a, you know, a lucrative uh, uh, you know, company working in, uh, not in the field of art. Anyway, uh, the building form follows a two part composition, a podium and a pavilion. The sculptural podium clad in white and green granite houses the museum and retail functions. The pavilion consists of three cantilevered volumes protruding to the surrounding city, mountain, park, and the sea. The three volumes house a theater, restaurant, and multi-purpose hall. And here it is, another, you know, uh, rather large work by uh, uh, Fumihiko Maki, but again with his uh, typical reticence, uh, we saw he was he is able to to to, to design uh, tall buildings. But also here we see something else: uh, lower, uh, you know, complex of buildings, and I think they have enough movement to make them interesting. Now he even plays as the fashion is now with the, with the columns. I don't know if it was really necessary for structural reasons, but China was wise. Of course, it can do it. It, 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 it afforded to do it, but they invited some very important architects. And now China is the locus of uh, you know, important architectures that stimulate the activity of the local architects. And now they have important uh, architects themselves. So this is in China by Fumihiko Maki, just this building here, an arts and you know, cultural center. I just no noticed preparing myself for the presentation about Dadao Ando that he also employs uh, transparent, um, you know, handrails and parapets. And to me, they, they are a little bit, uh, but I will say more about it when, we, when we'll talk about Dadao Ando. Dadao Ando even excludes, uh, you don't even see, you know, too many vertical uh, uh, supporting elements. Um, anyway. It is a little bit of a contradiction because you know that part of what a staircase is 
uh, is meant to console you, so to speak, to support you, to assist you in your climbing the stair or coming down the stair. And if it's all glass, as if it's not there, it's, you know, it is something there which is telling you, I am not here. Not so much in the case of Fumihikomaki, because here at least you see the handrail and, uh, you know, the, the vertical elements. But uh, uh, in, in the case of Tadao Ando, they are just uh, a little bit, in my opinion, rhetorically transparent. Anyway, um, a lot of whiteness, but somehow this whiteness in the case of Fumihikomaki doesn't bother me so much because the space is still, uh, uh, has a certain variety and multiplicity of views. But yes, whiteness can be, uh, even in the case of Zaha Hadid, in my opinion, a little bit problematic. If it's excessive, plus here uh, seems to be an off whiteness somehow, if my picture uh, is, uh, uh, you know, correct. Anyway. China, art center, cultural center, near the water, nice, Shenzhen. And a nice sketch, very poetical, discreet. He is a discreet architect, even when he builds skyscrapers, if well, you can take such a you know, paradoxical statement. to Mihikomaki in China. A cultural center. I am rushing a little bit because I still have to talk about two more architects. And as I said, I have to leave at 7.30 at the latest. Okay. Um, I like this building by, uh, by, uh, by Maki. It's a little bit different from the buildings built, but not necessarily. It, it's still, you know, uh, the Far East. It's not in Japan, it's in China. Now some works in progress. And with this, I end the presentation on Fumihiko Maki. The United Nations new building in New York City. I don't know if it is going to be built. Uh, this one. I didn't even know that Maki proposed uh, for the United Nations a new building. This one, the existing one, was done by uh, uh, Wallace and Abramovitz. Uh, with some inspiration coming from Le Corbusier and Oscar Niemeyer and maybe others. So this is the existing, and this is what Fumihiko Maki proposed. Now, this is a proposal which I understood was rejected in the end, although he won the competition for a capital city in India. Uh, I think uh, Foster, uh, Sir Norman Foster took over. Uh, so uh, here he says it was reported that Foster and partners had been selected to design the capital com complex of Amava Amaravati, a new, a new capital city for the state of Andhra Pradesh in the southeastern India. The commission, however, was not come without controversy. As revealed by Indian news company, The Wire, the project had earlier been awarded through invited competition to Japanese firm Maki and Associates were later removed from the project under uncertain circumstances. Anyway, this is what um, the office of Fumihi Komaki proposed. But this is not what uh, is being built. It's a subdued, <clears throat> subdued architecture, maybe sometimes a little bit too subdued. I don't know. Anyway, um, you 
which are just renderings. Of course, an ambitious project, you know, a capital city. Now the Reinhard, Ernst Reinhardt Museum in Wiesbaden, uh, which I think the construction uh, started. I don't know why, I think this is the, an artwork by the artist, uh, this uh, Ernst Reinhardt. And I like the artwork. I almost wish the building uh, had something of the spirit of his artwork, but it doesn't. Anyway, uh, this is the building, uh, the construction site. Uh, when I made this presentation, it was here, but uh, at this stage, but I imagine it, uh, maybe it was even completed. Okay, so happy birthday for Mihiko Maki, a beautiful age, 93 years old. 